do we despise rebuke? Hallelujah. Let's acknowledge Holy Spirit this morning. Holy Spirit, good morning. We acknowledge you, Holy Spirit. We acknowledge your presence, your person, and your power. Somebody put that in the chat. We acknowledge Holy Spirit. We acknowledge you, Holy Spirit. Your presence, your person, and your power. Not just your power, but your person. <laughs> the kindness says we despise rebuke because the flesh don't like correction and no good thing dwells in the flesh. <laughs> Paula Mata, she said, this curriculum is fire. Absolutely. And think you only pay $5 a week for tuition. Come on. <laughs> Tracy, why do we hide it? Why do we despise rebuke? Your grace, Bishop Hill, God bless you. Why do we despise rebuke? <clears throat> Wayne says the immaturity, yes, in the things of God, immaturity. My God, excellent. Hallelujah. Nailed it. Why do we despise rebuke? Oh, Rabbi, we acknowledge you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Well, legitimate at PhD. Yes, absolutely, Renee. Pastor Gerald Folsom, we acknowledge you, Holy Spirit, your presence, your person, and your power. Good morning, Veronica West Powell. Janet, why do we despise rebuke? Oh, my God, the apostle is here. Dr. Dr. Hyman, God bless you, Doc. Ooh, pride, absolutely. Why? Hallelujah. We don't understand <clears throat> the purpose of it. Wow. Amen. That's good, John. We don't understand. Why do we despise rebuke? My God, Dr. Dr. Hyman says we have an unhealthy ego, an unhealthy ego. Wow. She is a psychiatrist and a, a doctor of of everything, but particularly in the mind, the area of science of the mind. We have an unhealthy ego, Reba. Uh, Dina Wayne Kemp says, we despise rebuke because we don't like change. Juanita says, pride, Ikshaba. LaShawn <laughs> says, because we don't have a relationship with Holy Spirit. We misperceive, come on here, let me find that. We misperceive, mm, that correction is rejection. Let's go right there. Wow. <laughs> Unhealthy ego. And we perceive it incorrectly. I want to put this up. Dr. Hyman, thank you. Stay with me as long as you can today. We misperceive correction as rejection. Wow. <laughs> wow. We misperceive. Woo. Wow. That. Wow. I want us right now, Holy Spirit, heal my ego. Holy Spirit. You know, we always ask for healing in our bodies. Healing in our bodies. We even ask for healings of our minds. Then I want you to ask Holy Spirit for the healing of your perceptions right now. Holy Spirit, heal my perceptions. Nelda says, we think we already know everything. Wow. Woo, right there. Tawana, that's worth more than $5 a week. Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. Hyman, stay, stay. That's that's. That's powerful. And because of life traumas and decisions that we've made, when we get out of the truth, we develop this, 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 this uh, persona. Can't nobody tell me nothing. 
okay uh somebody says the person that gives us the rebuke doesn't have the right spirit but that's false because that should not be that's inconsequential that shouldn't even matter because the rebuke is for you to come back in the truth so i was driving down in my safe car uh, yesterday and the Holy Spirit began to deal with me about our lessons and how that was pure spirit of God. Lean in. Come on, Dr. John Davis. Holy Spirit, our type of Apostle Roberts um, began to deal with me about the lesson because he dropped that in my spirit <clears throat> about that outback. And as I was driving, of course, my car began to talk. I have one of those uh, Subarus that have safety alerts built in. I don't know where the camera is. I don't know how the, it, the camera knows. I, I was sitting at the light and I was talking on the phone, but it was Bluetooth. <clears throat> And the beep came on, beep, beep, and the flash said, car ahead, car ahead has moved. Wow. <laughs> I think, I think that, that, that in that moment, Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, these are, these are the alerts to keep you in truth. This car has been built to keep you safe and to arrive to your destination without incident or accident. Somebody said we rebuke because it's tight, but right. I want you to put in the chat, Holy Spirit, heal my perceptions. I want I want you to hear, I want you to put that. Woo, Rabbi Kashkete, heal my perceptions. Because when I think about what is happening in that car as I'm driving. My perceptions matter as to whether or not I will make the course corrections. Somebody write in the chat, course corrections. Here, here, here's, here's how I want to say it. I'm not scientific. I'm not the scientist Dr. Hyman is. Rebuke Conviction brings course corrections. Conviction brings course corrections. Conviction brings cor course corrections. Now, why would the spirit of the person that God uses to rebuke us. Now the rebuke brings conviction. Conviction brings course corrections. Why does the spirit of that person matter? Why, why does the spirit of that person, why does even the tone of their voice matter? Why, why does uh, the, the way that they approach you matter? Because the course correction is for you. And I don't want to say, oh, the devil, the enemy. No, it's your perceptions. It's your perceptions. And that could come as a result of your understanding of authority. Your understanding of authority, the authority of the word, the authority and priesthood of other believers. Uh, I remember, you know, I'm the oldest sister, I'm the firstborn. 
<laughs> and so I don't know why the firstborn daughter becomes the, 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 the safety patrol, but you do. I don't know how that happens. <laughs> and my brother used to say to me, you're not my mother. You're not my mother. When my sister was uh, cutting her teeth on my two daughters and parenting, helping me to parent and babysit with them while I travel, my chief, my April, got into a little something and her auntie, my sister, corrected her. And her first comment, she had to be about 11, was you not the mother of me. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> Ruthie's response was no, but I'm your auntie. Now, who tells us how they say it, what the approach is should not matter. So there's something in us. <laughs> Ruthie said she was three. She was already talking. You're not the mother of me. <laughs> Lord Jesus. <laughs> she said, no, but I'm your auntie. In other words, there is still authority here, even if I'm not your mother. So if another believer corrects us, if another person outside of the faith that, that brings a rebuke, why do we, why do we not say thank you? Why do we not value? <laughs> I, I love this, that our misperceptions. So I want us to pray, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Holy Spirit. Wow. Jade says, it's okay to acknowledge that you are triggered, my God. But don't let the trigger get in the way of the message. So something about that person. Good morning, Patricia Henderson. Coming up the timeline, Tracy Reed. <laughs> Face is loaded, Tracy. Ah, shake it out on our seat. So it, there may be some triggers in the approach. There may be. Some, something that triggered you by the person, by the person that, that, that brought the rebuke. But don't let the trigger get in the way of the message. How many of you hear what I'm saying? Somebody said, well, it's not what you said, it's how you said it. No. It's really what you said that triggered me. Listen to this. This is uh, D. Dwayne. I think this is valuable. I was an adult child and my mother was speaking to me about my financial management. I felt her tone and approach was off because I was an adult. I said to her later, it was your tone. She then said to me, be more concerned about what I am saying and not how I'm saying it, or you will miss the important thing. There it is. Bishop Chambers, that's powerful. Holy Ghost convicts and convinces. Hear the Holy Spirit and not the person. Whoa! Hear the Holy Spirit and not the person. Dr. Hyman, when you desire to grow and evolve, even if you don't like the approach, you will still value the truth and make the correction. Listen, you will value the truth over the trigger. Good God Almighty. We teaching up in this school of the Holy Spirit today. I got, I got help today. <laughs> value the truth over the trigger. Come on, somebody. Somebody write that down. Value the truth over the trigger. When you desire to grow, when you desire to stay in the truth, when you desire the fullness of Holy Spirit operation in your life, you will value truth no matter how it comes. You will value truth no matter who speaks it. 
You will value truth over your triggers, over your trauma. When you want the fullness of Holy Spirit in your life, you will value the truth over the trigger, over the trauma, over past disappointments and hurts. You will value the truth over the offense. Good God Almighty. Oh, church, we in class today. Come on, Zoomers. <laughs> Come on, free conference call. My God, in the name of Jesus, we put too much emphasis on the emotion and not the conviction of spirit to hold fast to the pattern of sound words. To hold fast. Let's run over to 2 Timothy. Hallelujah. He says, verse 13 of 2 Timothy chapter number one, hold fast the pattern of sound words. Hold fast, my God. That good thing which is committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. Keep it. Now you got to remember that Paul was the apostle of the church and he was the spiritual apostle father to Timothy. So there was a lot of times that he had to rebuke, correct, and align Timothy. So we've talked about when we are convicted without words, Holy Spirit convicts us. There is a sorrow that brings repentance. There is a, a, a pulling in the spirit. There, there is an unctioning. There is a, 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 an alert that goes off in our spirit. Holy Spirit does not speak a word, but you know you are now being convicted by the spirit of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at this. Look at this. Dr. Tangerine Apostle Hope says, my children just said to me yesterday, they don't want to receive correction sometimes because they feel that I'm not sensitive to their sensitivity at the moment. So I said, wow, the truth don't feel, the truth just is. Wow. It's in a realm of its own. Truth is in a realm of its own. Ooh, wow. So we must value truth over triggers. That's a t-shirt. <laughs> Bruising of a fragile ego, ego is secondary to conviction and alignment to Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh God. Oh God. Oh God. When you value the truth over the trigger, you allow for the fullness of Holy Spirit in your life. I want us, I'm going to move you past something today. I want to get you off first base. I'm a baseball fanatic. I love baseball. My daddy was a, a baseball player in the National uh, Negro League, the historic league. My daddy was a softball pitcher. My daddy played for two major teams, one he managed. And so he made sure we learned baseball. And many of you are on first base. I need to get you around the, uh, to home plate. I need to get you off of first base where you keep getting into places or getting into error because of your triggers, because of your trauma, because of your perceptions, because of your egos. Because if you're going to grow in Holy Spirit, you have got to learn that conviction, rebuke, come on here that these things are profitable for your life and that you must hold to the pattern, the pattern of truth. You must hold fast. Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth and his responsibility is to at all times keep you in truth. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. A believer who is more seasoned in that area can with Christ hear the message. However, as saints, when we are correcting, we need to be spirit led. Well, I, I don't think that that has anything to do with the response. You know, even if it's the flesh, if it's a correction, you have to take the correction, whether they are spirit led or not. 
If there is a correction, we have to learn to get past the mailman. The mailman delivers mail. I don't care what kind of attitude the mailman has. I don't care if the mailman didn't want to come to work that day. I don't care if the mailman had, had a bad night. That's not my business. My job is to open and read the mail. And I think we have to get beyond how we perceive people should talk to us or how we perceive people should approach us. See, Holy Spirit doesn't care about none of that. We've got to grow up. We've got to get off first base. We've got to get to the place, Regina Adams, coming up the timeline where we value ourselves being right and not being defensive. Ooh, glory to God. Ooh, let me let me just raise this up because uh, when when Doc is on, I like to to just highlight because she brings a scientific and a psychological and psychi psychiatric perspective to Holy Spirit's ministry in our lives. Unhealed wounds from childhood, unprocessed, and let me deal with unforgiveness. <sighs> Unforgiveness. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Urgent messages are given in urgent ways. Come on, somebody. Urgent messages are given in ur hey, you got mail. <laughs> Listen, when the mail comes, we got to get beyond whether or not someone from our ethnicity or our persuasion or our belief system delivered the mail. You got to get beyond the mailman. You got, hey, Shabba. <laughs> Mother Pearl says, I love football. And Papa loves baseball. Come on, Pop. He know what's right. He in the spirit. <laughs> we got to get past that. And God uses all kinds of personnel, personalities to correct us. We never stop to think that the way that person came is the way God wanted them to come to get your attention. Hallelujah. And, and, and God doesn't only use Christians to, to, to bring rebuke. God doesn't only use your ethnicity. God doesn't use people that are in your love language. Your love language may be words of affirmation, but God does not always use the person who comes to you with a rebuke. They see your behavior. So it's not, this ain't no time for affirmation. Physical touch. Oh, if they had just hugged me, that may not be the time for that. Oh, gift giving. Come on now. We all like to hear things in our love language. But when correction is being made, when conviction is necessary, Holy Spirit will go beyond your love language and how you like to be talked to. Am I talking to anybody? So the question, come on, Graham, is, but do you want to be free? Do you want to be free? Or do you want to, again, get another offense somewhere, <laughs> yeah, another another grudge, uh, 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 another, another disobedience? And here's what happens. You never make the course correction. You got caught up in the wrong stuff. And you never got to make the course correction. There are many tools in God's toolbox. There's drills and hammers and sledgehammers and crowbars and, and, and screwdrivers and different kinds of, there's many tools. There's many tools. Ooh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wow. Now, D. Wayne, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to put that up there. Wow. Truth moment. She said, he says, I never knew this. I remember being at Ebenezer and I thought, oh, Bishop Vaughn is hard. Wow. And Reverend Evelyn Horn said to me, God bless Reverend Horn. You don't feel that way. It's undealt with sin in your life that makes you feel that way. And that statement changed my life. Wow. <laughs> hey, somebody put it in the chat. Do you want to be free? Do you want to be free? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Do you want to be free? Do you want to be free? 
And so as we are growing up, as we are moving into the things of God, and I, and I keep hearing people say, but my feelings matter. And your feelings may matter. But what matters most is the course correction that Holy Spirit is trying to bring. And here's where we are. We live in this realm called feelings. And we think that those feelings are, 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 are very important. That's how we've been raised to think that our feelings are important. You should respect my feelings. You should respect the way I feel about how you said what you said. I get it. But I want you to step over into this realm called Pentecost. I want you to, for a moment, step out of that emotional, physical, natural realm because nothing over there has value over here. And I want you to understand when you are being natural and when you should be spiritual. If I'm raising my children, as one, my beloved says, I have five different children. I have to parent them different ways. Absolutely. But remember that you're raising them natural. So there are principles, natural, but there are also principles, spiritual. I want you to, I want you to hear this. I want you to understand, do you want to be free? That's where we've got to focus. Do you want to be free? And one of the ways that God brings conviction is through people. When God brings correction to us, another way is through scripture. When God brings scripture to us, that's profitable. Second Timothy uh, chapter number three, verse 16, that is profitable for doctrine, is profitable for rebuke, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness that the man and woman of God may be complete or mature, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Notice what, what Paul says to Timothy, chapter four, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Verse three, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Wow. Because according to their own desires, wow. According to their own desires, they will have itching ears and will heap up for themselves teachers. Listen to this, verse four. And they will turn their ears from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Cynthia asks a great question. If it's not spirit filled, why would it be coming from the Holy Spirit? Because... Holy Spirit can use anybody. Holy Spirit is not limited to just being churchy. Holy Spirit isn't Christian. <laughs> we got to understand how broad this realm is, how big this realm is. You may not ever get rebuke from a prophet. You may not ever, you may be on your job and it's a, an employee that rebukes you. It could be a boss who is not saved that rebukes you. You could be in the beauty shop and you did something you shouldn't have did with your hair and the beautician will rebuke you. Listen to me. It could be a, a situation at a restaurant. It could be a situation at the courthouse at the, that the security guard rebukes you. It has nothing to do with church. <laughs> Oh, come on, somebody. You got to understand that Holy Spirit is not limited when it comes to you. And when it comes to me, he will send alerts regardless. I'm sitting in the car and the car is rebuking me. 
Oh, I got my out back. It's a cute little car, but it doesn't have the Holy Ghost. But it has built-in conviction. Get out of your flesh. Get out of religion for just 20 more minutes. And understand that what Holy Spirit's job is, is to keep us in truth. And it doesn't matter who truth comes from. You got to remember that. And you've got to be able to walk in all of these spaces and remember that Holy Spirit is there too. That Holy Spirit is omnipresent. Holy Spirit is omnipotent. Holy Spirit is omniscient. That Holy Spirit, great question, great concern. Listen, <laughs> hallelujah. Glory to God. I thank God that Holy Spirit is not limited. That at the moment you need correction, there may not be a spirit-filled person there. An employee can say, you know, you always do this and this isn't the right way for you to do that. That person could be a Muslim. That person could be a Jew. That person could be unsaved completely. But can we get to the fact that you're doing it wrong? Can we just get past that and get to the fact that Holy Spirit just corrected me using an unsaved or unspirit-filled person? The police officer pulls you over, gives you a ticket. Why? Because you were lawless. Does the Holy does the does the police need the Holy Spirit to give you a ticket? No. But the ticket wasn't is a is is a is a wake up. It's an alert. This you need a course correction. <laughs> Who do I want to be free? Do I want to be free, or am I going to live in my emotions for my whole life? Am I going to live in my feelings my whole life? Hallelujah. Am I going to be emotional my whole life? Or do I trust Holy Spirit? Do I trust Holy Spirit? Sometimes your own child can say something. Sometimes your own family member who ain't got no church in them can say something that you know, ooh, that was Holy Spirit. <laughs> Get past the fact that you got checked and get on with making the course correction this is how we stay in truth i want us to focus on truth and not error i want us to focus on truth and not feelings i want us to focus on truth and not triggers I want us to grow up, get off of first base, and let's at least make it to second. Ooh, am I going to be emotional my whole life? Am I going to blame people for the way I feel and the way I act my whole life? Am I going to hold everyone else accountable for me being out of order my whole life? Or am I ever going to get to the place in God that I am making the course corrections regardless? Did my feelings say something? Yes. Did my emotions feel something? Yes. But am I going to remain in that emotional immaturity my whole life? Or am I finally going to grow up in the Lord and make the course corrections. Am I finally going to be well? When will I be productive? When will I get out of my childhood angers? When will I move past my childhood disappointments? Am I going to be emotional and react my whole life. Ooh, Rabba, Kaba, Kukama. Ooh, Baba Mashik, Teddy Diose. Ooh, am I going to always 
react? Am I, you know, and sometimes Holy Spirit would just tell you, don't say nothing. Don't respond to that. Listen to what they say. Just listen, <laughs> you know, and, and listen. Sometimes again, again, you don't expect God to use that person. You don't expect that that person is going to come and say something to you. But that's the person the Holy Spirit used because there's two tests involved. The, the ultimate test is will you make the course correction? But the first test is will you hear Holy Spirit in that person's mouth? Can you hear Holy Spirit in the mouth of a person that's not saved? Can you hear Holy Spirit speak to you when you don't agree? Can you still hold hear Holy Spirit? It's not just about, yes, the course correction is the ultimate goal, but are you training yourself to hear Holy Spirit even when you don't like it, even when you don't agree, even when you're in your feelings? Come on now. I keep hearing people say, I'm in my feeling. I get in my feeling. I get in my feeling. Why? Why do you opt? to go to that space. Why do we like being in our feelings rather than being in the truth? I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Now the tab I said, when the mailman comes, we don't care. How you care? You, how do you care? Do you get mad at the mailman for the mail you got? Or do you go back to the person that sent the mail. How, how do we feel about ourselves? It's our perceptions that need healing by Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit healed my perceptions. Holy Spirit healed my feelings, my emotions. Listen to me, heal my perceptions. My perceptions are skewed. My perceptions, even in church, we came from something to the church. And we had expectations of the church that are not in the Bible. We have expectations. Ooh, shaba. Ooh, rabba kishkete. <laughs> John Andrew says, most of these church babies, my God, they would never survive the old apostolic. Absolutely. Y'all couldn't have taken a Benson and Nita Hosa. You couldn't have taken a mother Estella Boyd. Because you are not, you're so, and, 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 and Holy Spirit knows that you have gifts and is needful of your talent. But in order to be profitable, we've got to deal with some truth. We've got to deal with truth. Holy Spirit, heal my perception. Heal my perceptions. Heal my perceptions. Heal my, okay, okay, I'm going to say it again. Heal my perceptions. Heal my perceptions. Oh, God, God, am I mature enough to walk in the spirit at all times? Am I mature enough? to overlook the trigger and hear the truth. Am I mature enough? And listen, you can't, you can't make wrong right. I'm not justifying the way the person spoke to you. I'm not justifying the fact that the person did not have a good attitude. I'm not justifying the fact that the person wasn't saved. I'm simply asking you, can you get beyond that and hear the truth? I'm not justifying that people said something in a way that was accusatory or dismissive. I'm not, I'm not justifying that. But what I want us to understand is that Holy Spirit can use that very thing, that very person, that very manner in which they approached you to show you your triggers, to show you where you are not maturing, to show you where you still are not taking caution to stay in truth. <laughs> Woo, 
Dr. Angie Ray. Oh my God. Come on in. <laughs> Angie was my sister and ain't no way in the world. <laughs> they can't, you can't take it because you don't like rebuke. I'm not justifying whether or not a person could have said it better. I'm not justifying a person. I'm not justifying any of that. I'm simply saying that when you opened the mail and you read it, was it the truth? And are you willing to see Holy Spirit even in that and make the course corrections so that you can hold fast to the pattern that has been given to you by Holy Spirit? Oh, Lord, Holy Spirit, heal, heal my perceptions. Heal my perceptions. My perceptions of my denomination. My that's why when people come on and talk about them and they do, I say, uh-uh, this is not about them. This is not about they. This is about you. You're in class. You cannot speak about anybody else. You got to talk about you. Holy Spirit ain't dealing with them. They're not here. Holy Spirit is dealing with you. We got to stop throwing off. We got to stop being shady. We got to stop making everybody else wrong. Holy Spirit is speaking to you. Holy Spirit, heal my perceptions. You don't want to be in the crowd that I just read from 2 Timothy. Thank you, Charlotte. You don't want to be in that space <laughs> where you don't hear truth. And you resolve yourself to live in error. You don't want that to be your outcome. Holy Spirit did not come for you to live in error. Holy Spirit has come to keep us in the truth. And you don't want to be in the crowd that turns your ears away from truth. Who am I speaking to? I need you to hear this. The time is coming when people will no longer listen and respond to healing words of truth because they are selfish and proud. So you will seek out teachers with soothing ears that line up with your desires saying just what you want to hear and you will close your ear to the truth because you didn't like their approach. Tap said, if I'm drowning, I just need somebody to come get me. Come on, Denise. Hallelujah. Who am I talking to? Hallelujah. Wow. Jade says, where there's a tone, there's a stone. <laughs> My God, don't don't get us, don't pick up a stone. Don't don't get condemning. Don't become a condemning person. Well, I didn't like the way she came to me. No, you got offended. It triggered something, but truth was spoken. You've got to come to the edge, and you've got to cross over into truth. You don't want to be of the group of people who are headstrong, who are haughty. You don't want to be in the crowd that you are lovers of flesh more than lovers of God. You are self-protecting. You are self-protecting. And you can never get to truth self-protecting. The vulnerability is what brings healing. When we are transparent and vulnerable, and some of us have had enough drama and trauma that we, we wear uh, blankets and we wear uh, 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 all of these coverings. And when truth comes, it pierces through that. And we don't like it. But my beloved, you have got to get past the feelings and get on to the truth. Because that's the job of Holy Spirit. Not just to make you feel good, not just to make you shout, not just to make you dance, but to make us repent, to bring us to repentance. You don't want to be of the crowd that has a form of godliness, 
but deny the power of the Holy Spirit. Ooh, Rabbi Hasha. Hallelujah. Listen to me carefully. Ooh, we got so many areas in our life that we have got to surrender to truth. Hallelujah. Somebody write that down. We've got so many areas in our lives that we've got to surrender to truth. We got to surrender to truth. We've got to surrender all of these areas, childhood, adulthood, relationships, diet, health, finances, uh, all of these areas have got to be surrendered to truth. I got to go. We've got so many areas. Sometimes we're working on something. Ooh, sometimes we're working on something in the, in the spiritual realm where it's in the emotional realm. We've never surrendered to truth. We're working on ministry. We're working on this. We're working on that. But it could be an area of finances, but we have not surrendered to truth. Maybe we have tried to be a great elder, a great teacher, a great preacher, but we're not a good spouse. We're not a good husband. We're not, we're not a good wife. Maybe we're not even a good child, a good parent. There's so many other areas that Holy Spirit is working on to bring us into truth than just ministry. And so in all of those spaces, God will send people to rebuke us. And we have to get past what we felt. We have to get past the trigger and get to the truth. Because the truth that you know will make you free. I got to go. <laughs> I don't know where the time goes. <laughs> Kirk, let's say time up already. Father, thank you for Jesus. And Jesus, we thank you for salvation and redemption. But now we thank you for the journey that we must take with Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we love you. We adore you. Thank you for truth in our inward parts. Thank you that truth pierces our vulnerabilities, our protection and our devices that we use to keep you away from us. We thank you that truth pierces that. Bring us into truth. Heal our perceptions. Remove our offenses. Desensitize our triggers. And bring us into truth in every area. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Cleanse us, not only from the outside, but the inside and our conscience. Woo. Amen. I gotta go. <laughs> Woo, my God. We gonna finish this. <laughs> we still have areas that we have to surrender to Holy Spirit. Gotta go. Share this on your timelines and watch out for our YouTube page on the replay and subscribe. Woo. Woo. <laughs> my God, my God.